This video is going to look at how to take basic primitive shapes in Tinkercad that make up furniture blanks and modify them to create scale models of furniture and appliances. Uh, to learn more about how to use a furniture blanks library, uh, search for the video Furniture Blanks in YouTube. The first thing I'm going to do is actually subtract from the design. So I'm going to duplicate the mustard yellow rectangle and then I'm going to stretch it out and make it longer and then I'm going to turn it into a hole. And next I'm going to hold down the shift key while dragging down on the top pull handle and that will shrink the entire object proportionally. That's looking pretty good. I'm actually then going to click on and duplicate that hole. And this time, I'm going to cut through the yellow rectangle in the other dimension to make legs. The legs look even to me, but I'm going to make sure they are by selecting all three objects, either by drawing a box around them, but not the back of the sofa, or I can shift click on each object I want to select. Now I want them aligned to the yellow rectangle. So I'm going to click the Align button and then click on the yellow rectangle and that tells Tinkercad align everything to the yellow rectangle. First I'll align in one dimension in the center and then I'll center in the other dimension. Now I'm going to select all four objects because when I group them together I want the holes to cut through the back of the sofa to create legs. So I'll click on group or type control G. Now I'm going to make arms for the sofa by sizing down some rectangles. I can duplicate the arm now that I've made it by pressing the duplicate button and then I think I'll just use the right arrow key to quickly move the uh, arm over in that direction. Now I want to make sofa cushions, so I'm going to size down a box and I think I'm going to adjust the increments that I'm working in from one millimeter down to 0.25 so I have a little more control. I'll duplicate that rectangle and I'm going to raise it up with a lifting cone. I think I'll change its color to light blue and then I'm going to shrink it down by holding shift and changing one of the pull handles. Now I'm going to rotate it. Remember that if you stay within the degrees ring circle it rotates by 22 and a half degrees in those increments. Whereas if your mouse is outside of the circle, it goes by one degree. So I'm going to stay within the circle to easily rotate 45 degrees. I'm going to shrink the box a bit more. But the pillow is a bit too square, so I'm going to increase the radius in the properties panel here to make it more, look more like a cushion. I'll also raise it up a bit. But now I'm having trouble getting the exact height I want, so I'm actually going to just type in an exact custom number into that dimension. I'll select both items and I'll group them. But I want to have it be two colors, so I'm going to click on the color and then the multicolor option. Now the cushion will function like one object that I can move and rotate into position. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to click Duplicate and then use the right arrow to move it over. If I have not clicked elsewhere, I can go up and click on the Duplicate button again and it will copy the action that I just did, which is make a copy and move that copy over. And I can do this as many times as I want. Now I'm going to select all three cushions and center them on the sofa. And there we go. There is an example of using furniture blanks to create scale models.